Help us, God. Oh, Jesus. He said that it's not his will that any should perish, but that all might come to repentance. And let's turn to Acts 3 and 19. Oh, God. And it reads, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. And I'm going to stop there. The scripture is saying, as we say, be godly sorry and change. It's be godly sorry and change. Be godly sorry and change. Sometimes we do things and we say, well, I'm sorry. And then we do those things again. And then we say, I'm sorry. But are you really sorry? Because if you were truly sorry, you wouldn't do those things anymore. So be godly sorry enough to make a change. Repent and turn from what's wrong to what is right so that God can blot out. Or so that he can wipe away all your sins. So that your soul is not lost. People, we need to be serious about God. We need to understand that there is a heaven and that there is a hell and that if you don't give your lives to Christ, you will burn forever. Let's turn to Revelations 3 and 20. Amen. And the scripture reads, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Jesus is saying, look, I'm standing at the door of your heart and I'm knocking. Oh, God, help the people to answer, Lord. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. He said, I'm knocking. He's dealing with you. He's drawing you to himself, but you have to open the door. You have to open the door because God gives us a choice. He's a gentleman. He's not going to force his way into your life. He's not going to bogart you into a decision to serve him. He's a gentleman. So what did he say? He said, I'm knocking. So he's knocking at the door of your heart. So why don't you invite him in? He says, if you hear my voice and open the door, I'll come into you and will sup with you and you with me. So you have to invite him in. Don't you want to invite the Lord into your life today? If there's anybody to invite into your life, it's the Lord because he's someone you should know. Harry Potterfield, I think on channel 32 says they have all these people and they feel that you should know. So the Lord, Jesus Christ, is someone you should know. He's someone you should invite into your heart and let him sup with you. Missionary Martin said, that's relationship, and I have to agree with her. He's supping with you, and then you're supping with him. Isn't that wonderful? Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Do you hear him calling you? Do you hear him knocking at the door of your, of your heart? It's a call to repentance. Now let's look at Mark 13 and 32. Help us, God. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, help us, Lord. Oh, God, help, Lord, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. I thank God just, just for dealing with me and how he called me to the ministry and how at first I, I wasn't sure, but the more I prayed and gave myself over to the Lord, how he just began to deal with me and just began to tell me, Cassandra, teach my word. And how I just, I didn't understand. I just couldn't understand why God, Evangelist Wilson, would call on me to do something like this. This was the last place I wanted to stand. But I thank God for considering me, for choosing me. I didn't choose myself. God chose me. So I thank God for that. 
But Mark 13 and 32 says, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. And the scripture is referring to Jesus' coming back to take the saints out of this world back to heaven to forever be with the Lord, Minister Lane. But you can't go back with him if you haven't answered the call to repentance. You can't go back with him if you haven't done what he's told you to do. And like the scripture says, Mother Wells, we don't know the day. And if we did, some of us are waiting until the day before to get it right and say, Lord, just, you know, I'm going to get it right right before you come. So, no, we don't know because some of us would do just that. So you have to give your lives to Christ now. You have to prepare. You have to make preparations now for that day. The scripture said, be ye also ready. It didn't say get ready. You have to be ready for in such a time uh, we don't know when the time is coming. So since we don't know, but one thing we do know, and that is that he is coming back. So we have to be ready and make ready. Mark 13 and 33 says, Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. But how can you watch if you're in darkness? How can you, Evangelist Gardner? You can't watch if you're in the dark. You have to be walking in the light of salvation to watch with spiritual eyes. Because if you're in darkness, the scripture says you can't comprehend the light. And you won't be able to spiritually discern the signs of the times. And I don't know about you all, but when I watch the news every day, it, it just shows me that we're getting closer and closer and closer and closer. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, Help me, because the message is to me, too. I said, Lord, you help me, even as we're consecrating on this January. I said, Lord, I don't want it to be just another month of me pushing my plate back or of me going without food. I said, just, just do something for me. Do a new thing down in my spirit. Do a new thing for me, God, because I want to help somebody else. Minister Max said on the, uh, during the Watch Me service, he said, it's ministry time in 2009. And I said, well, Lord, thank you for the time that you gave me with my son, but now I'm ready to do the work that you've called me to do. I've got to help somebody else. And I have to be ready just like it because it doesn't matter. Satan doesn't care who he deceives. You know, if, if I had, he'll let me hide behind the fact that I had a baby. You know, and every time they call, you know, I'll be saying, well, my baby, is he's too little. But, you know, I asked God for a certain amount of time, and he just about gave me the time that I asked for. Missionary Martin called, well, she sat right there and said, you're the speaker for January. And I said, but I said until he's one. She said, no, January. So the Lord settled me in my spirit, so I knew then that it was time. Because I don't want to hide behind anything. I don't want to make excuses for anything that the Lord gave me to do. You all, I ran a long time and paid a horrible price internally for not being who the Lord called me to be. So I just thank God. I thank God. But if you're in darkness, you won't comprehend the light. Don't miss God's call. Give the Lord a hand praise. And I keep saying it, but I just keep hearing it. I thank God for mercy because God doesn't have to do it. We take it light. Oh, the Lord told me to do this, but I'm too scared. Minister Mack was talking about fear for the part of Sunday school that I did get to sit in on. And I, I just began to think even at home. I said, Lord, help us not to be afraid. The devil wants to put fear on us, but the scripture said that perfect love cast out fear. And that fear has torment. It's the worst feeling in the world when you're, you want to do something. And the fear is just gripping you and it's paralyzing you. You want to do it, but you're so scared you can't move. That's, that, that's not of God. He said perfect love cast out fear. Let's thank God for the perfect love. 
that in spite of how I feel, in spite of how afraid I am, because I love God, I'm going to do, in spite of my fears, what God has given me to do. I'm going to work those works that God has given me to work well in this day because I don't know when my last day is here. We don't know, so I want to be about my father's business, and I don't want to be afraid to do it. Don't miss God's call. Now, why are there calls to repentance? And there are calls to repentance because, as we said, God has given some of us jobs to do. And for our own reasons, we're not doing them. As I said, God is saying that some of us are hiding behind our fears. And a lot of times, Minister Lane, it's fear of the unknown or fear of rejection, or fear of what someone might think of us, or just fear. And God doesn't want us to be in that state of being. That's a horrible state to be in. 